We continue to follow the response to that other shooting at Dunbar High School. While crime numbers are trending down, a lot of people are still concerned about elevated levels of violence involving D.C. youth. 7 News, Tom Rousey is live for us outside the Wilson Building with the details. And Tom, we heard from the mayor yesterday. What are members of the city council saying now? Well, you're going to hear what they're going to focus on next in just a moment, Michelle. You know, as you were talking about out there in the city, some numbers show crime is going down, but it's still making the headlines all the time, especially when it comes to crimes involving kids and teenagers. So today here at the city's Wilson building, we asked council members what's next in the fight against juvenile crime. We're seeing already that the crime is trending downward. But D.C. council members recognize crime is still high. Recent crimes like a shootout outside Dunbar High, a three-year-old girl being shot and killed, and one teen allegedly killing another at Brookland Metro show that crime involving juveniles is still a big problem. Nobody's content with where things are. I'm just saying this, the decrease in crime is how we got to where we are today. Because we didn't really deal with it, it spread throughout the city. Council member Trayon White says he's frustrated with the narrative that crime is dropping. It's not getting any better. It's shootings every day. D.C. police only report most juvenile crime stats every six months, so we have no recent numbers except for carjacking, and those numbers tell a concerning story. Out of 52 carjacking arrests so far this year, 34 were of juveniles, many too young to legally drive. Juveniles now make up about two out of every three carjacking arrests. And although some of it could be increased enforcement, the 34 arrests of juveniles this year is well up from 20 last year, a 70% increase. Public Safety Committee Chair Brooke Pinto led the fight to pass the big secure D.C. crime bill earlier this year. It increases the chances a juvenile accused of violence will not be released pre-trial. Her next step involves the upcoming budget. We are making sure that this budget full funds secure D.C., making sure that this budget funds literacy investments for our kids. Also, the council will now focus on keeping kids in school. The mayor and others have introduced truancy bills. We need to get a testimony on the truancy bills. We need to think about what's the most effective ways to make a difference on that. We gotta turn that around. We're actually having a round table on the truancy bill next week on Monday, uh, where we're gonna have testimony from a number of expert witnesses with regard to juvenile violence, as well as juvenile attendance in schools. DC Council Chairman Phil Mendelson expects the full council to take up those issues next month or early July. And council members say they want to hear from experts on juvenile crime first so they can make sure the bill they come up with to try to fight school truancy really does keep kids in the classroom. Reporting live outside the city's Wilson building, I'm Tom Rousey, 7 News.